T Kibbs Studio with your host Kibbs himself and Nathan. With another episode of Resident Evil Zero. Dodge. And I just dodge a zombie. I wish there was a dodge button. You can Stay. dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. And a zombie. Well. Even for like twenty days later, zombie. Yeah. <laughs> These kind of zombies just don't want to be in tight quarters with them. Yeah. If you do, swing short. <laughs> <laughs> Which, on a different note, um, as we are playing Resident Evil, I would like to uh, say, uh, just point out, rest in peace, George A. Romero. If it weren't for him, we would probably not have uh, Resident Evil or very many zombie movies out today. So, rest in peace, sir. You were a man in that inspired so many. Trying to eulogy or something? I wish. <laughs> Actually, I, I think I heard somewhere where he didn't get much uh, recognition in his death. Like, no. Which was sad. He he really was. He, he was the creator of zombies. Really, I mean, truly. He was known as the father of zombies. Yeah. Um, he really was. Which, uh, you know, Night of the Living Dead. It, that was what started all. And plus, he uh, he actually create or he helped a lot of the uh, indie movies come out mm-hmm. um, because you know a lot of his movies were by himself and everything. And he really started a lot. He started a huge trend. Yeah. And, like in the end, he was probably he was probably worth a lot of money. Yeah. I know. As a kid, I I always looked up to him. I know that. So it was a sad day when I heard about it, and Resident Evil fans were also sad because, again, if it weren't for him, there would be a lot of stuff that, you know, all the people that watch The Walking Dead. Be no zombies. Exactly. Be no walkers, no biters. Yeah. Nothing stupid, nothing crazy. Sad days. <coughs> I wish, oh God, more of these things. Grasshopper. So much. And they it looks like you have some kind of special so weapon there on the couch. That would be ah. too quick for your shoddy. Yeah. That would be a grenade launcher. Ha ha ha. Oh boy. I want to get it, but I don't have room. So we'll just get these things. And then come back in like three seconds. But first, I really want these shotgun shells. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> it's the sugar. I think it's chronic hiccups. Pretty sure that's a thing. Is, it, is there a pill for that? Or like an app for that? Probably both. The white statue. We got a black statue earlier. I, I didn't I see anything. I put it on the but... scales back there. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of. It has like... one wing though. The black statue did. And this one only has two. There is a lot of uh, mythology and thought out there that where the demons actually had a solitary wing hmm. instead of a pair of wings like angels would have. That makes actually. But if that was the case, then that white statue should have resembled a angel. Full angel. And there was no wings on that one at all. Just breasticles. Yes, I said breasticles. Hot. Not the H-O-T. But the H-A-W-T. Hot. What does that even stand for? Stands for hot. (laughs) Learn your ABCs, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you know, I like that. Pretty hot and tempting. That. Like you're fat girl. Yeah, that's true. It's, I thought like hot was like. P H A T. I thought hot was like a. Temperature. Horrendously, <laughs> awesomely. Yeah, I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> we can spell, we promise. Okay. We'll put that statue, angel, breasticled. Breasticle Angel. <laughs> I love words. <laughs> it shouldn't balance out, but... Nope. 
It even actually kind of does look like a demon. Mm -hmm. It really does. So are those supposed to balance back out, or are you supposed to have one higher than the other? Or what's going on there? It should balance out at the end by the time we get everything we need. Because uh, there are some wings that we need to find. First, I want to set some stuff down. Because we need that rocket launcher. Chow, 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 chow. At least I want it. Okay, what? So you can always combine that with the other stack over there. The handgun ammo. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to leave these here for now. We won't need them. For now. Ladies and gentlemen, I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. <laughs> you got the main man in the, in the area of Resident Evil's here. I'd like to think so. Keep that pride. <laughs> Just watch that eagle. <laughs> eagle. I try to. The eagle will kill you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back to this door. So, uh... Most Resident Evil fans would obviously know that there's a T virus and the G virus, mm -hmm. but some people may not know what is the actual difference between the T virus and the G virus. Well, the difference. I mean, if I'm <laughs> okay, I'm having a brain fart. T virus and G virus. They're they are different in. A few ways. Um, the differences are T type virus um, was the first virus to actually come about. Mm -hmm. And it was in the main game. Um, Which would have been Resident Evil 1 and 2. Resident Evil 1. And 3 as well, right? Well, actually, like, 2 and 3, that's when the G virus came about. Okay. Um, what spread around the whole town was the T-Virus. Right, so it created the initial zombies. Yes. And the T-Type. The G-Virus, though, is what William Birkin created and what he, in Resident Evil 2, in Resident Evil 2, um, that's what he injected in himself and his daughter. And if I'm not mistaken, no, not his wife, but him and his daughter. Uh-huh. Uh, Sherry Birkin, which is she's actually playable in uh, Resident Evil Six. Gotcha. Fun fact. But um, there's just different strains of the virus. Oh, that's one of those kind of puzzles. You yeah. Gotta swap out with the other character and turn certain things exactly. back and forth and whatnot. And gotcha. Yeah, the T and J virus are just different strains. Um, it's kind of like with Resident Evil Six. Um, there is a different virus called the C virus. Oh. Um, which is completely different. And then Resident Evil 7, the new newest one, one, the newest one, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was the E virus. I've only played it once and I, I don't quite remember. It's been it's not like a few months. Bola, huh? No, no. They wouldn't go that low. I mean, I don't or think would so. They? I don't know. So <laughs> no. we got a centipede now. I hate bugs. <laughs> Do these scientists know no bounds? No, they don't. So let me guess, you gotta shoot without shooting her? Um, no. The, the, the... Okay. Now... Mr. Grenade. With these games, it's not so much about the, uh... Actual contact point. Yeah, it's more about just the enemy themselves. And in the newer games, it's much more complicated. You, you, know, you can't shoot your partner and everything. Well, in these newer games, you can actually aim. Yeah, that more. too. And I actually probably shouldn't hit that. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. You exactly. straight up like shot a grenade launcher into her back. Straight into her, yeah. Exactly. It's kind of ridiculous. But... With this boss fight, you just gotta be careful at where you are. Ricochet. Ah, you missed. There we go. Just gotta be careful where you are and where the character's uh, path is. 
because I mean, with almost any game, you can kind of tell where the uh, enemy's path is going to be. Right, where they're going to stop. Exactly. You just got to. <sighs> Crap. You're not really good with that thing, are you? No. <laughs> centipede is stupid. Step us out of pain. Come on now. Is that, I remember earlier we were also talking about the T-virus and how it produced the G-type nemesis and then the G-virus itself produced a different type of nemesis. Mm -hmm. So um, like with these newer ones, it's the G-virus. They have their own special nemesis. Um, yeah, actually uh, in Resident Evil 6, the uh, C-virus created what was called time out of grades. Yeah. <laughs> um, Why is this thing not working? Yeah. That virus in Resident Evil 6 created the Eustonok, is what they called it. Okay. Yeah, that's the weirdest name I've ever heard. Well, it's not as bad as Lost Bloggers, you know, that producing is true. it. That is true. Uh, but yeah, they created that. Come on, he should be dying soon. Resident Evil 7 didn't really have a tyrant, per se. It was just more mutations. Um... Crap. Yeah. Resident Evil 5. You got punched by a mandible. <laughs> <laughs> Resident Evil 5 didn't have any tyrants. So I never 4, not so much either. Yeah, I remember 4 pretty well. They just had their lost bloggers and it was. It spread into a bigger creature, that big giant. Exactly. You know, and then. You know, um, yeah. Well, tyrants. Um, the T type tyrant, that's. Oh, that's. The one in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. The regular regular old tyrant they created. Is um, he the one with the big, weird, like, eyeball on his shoulder? No. That is the G-Virus okay. um, tyrant. Centurion Spazarian. It's got a ring to it. And hey, I'm still fine. Nice. So he, so that was the T-Virus then? Yes. Okay. No, you're talking about the G-Virus. The, the one with the eyeball was the G-Virus. Yeah. And if I... If I'm not mistaken, the one with um, the one with the eye is actually a combination of the T virus and G virus together. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. And if I do recall, in the end of the first live action movie, that one character is transforming into a nemesis, mm -hmm. the tyrant, but he actually starts out with the eyeball kind of like splitting out of his shoulder. Mm -hmm. So like he was the probably. It was probably more of a unknown lab result, yeah. virus kind of thing. So probably. So they do kind of have some homage to the games. They just, I, yeah. I swear, it's just another multiverse. It's like Flash came by and fucked their timeline up. It really, it, it that's exactly how it yeah. flashed it up. Flash always screws things up. He's old. That's what you get when you give a kid, you know, superpowers. Look at Spider Man, he fucks up kind of on, on often, but he, he really he, he does. saves the day afterwards, just like Flash. He really, really does. Life lessons. Life lessons. So now we got a fire key. A key with a fire design, design on it. So now. Is that a lock of fireplace? What else? Zombie bats? Phew. Actually, I think they do zombie bats in some I game. remember in Resident Evil 4 there was bats in the caves, but. Yeah. Maybe they didn't go for you. No, they didn't. They you really could kill didn't. them and get more of that spindle, spindle yeah. whatever it was called, the money. Yeah, the spindles. Used for the, hello, stranger, want to boil up in? Which, if we were on that subject, I missed the mysterious, or not mysterious stranger, but uh, the merchant. Yeah, the mysterious merchant. He was, he was one of the best things in Resident Evil. I know it was Resident Evil 4. He was the best supporting character ever. He was. In Resident Evil, in my opinion. Was I played at least. I did have a demo of 7, but never got too far into it. Ah. And I, I will say, Resident Evil 7, if you have a VR headset, play Resident Evil 7 in VR. You, it will not disappoint. It is absolutely amazing. And, and if you have, you know, go ahead and leave a comment. Yeah. Tell us your experience. I you know, playing it the first time, I played Resident Evil 7 in VR the whole way through, 
And at first, yeah, it made my head hurt, but it was so worth it in the end. Well, it's like a, we both wear glasses with a new pair of glasses, you know, I mean, it hurts your eyes for a while until you get used to it. Yeah. Just because you're not used to seeing that clear. Yeah. And it's, it's weird. You can wear glasses in the VR headset, but I know with me, um, I actually can see better without my glasses off in the VR headset. Are your glasses scratched up pretty good? Or are they pretty clear? I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they have a few scratches, but even with, you know, not having the VR headset on, I can see better with my glasses, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, outside. But in the VR headset, I, I, I can see so much better without my glasses. It's just weird. But, okay. Well, I know with me, if I have any... If I have a multitude of scratches in my glasses, everything's a blur. Everything's a bright light. It sucks. Yeah. Okay, so we got some lighter fluid and some more, uh, some more bottles for Is some the lighter water. fluid. Very specific for your lighter. Like, can you combine that with it? Strike. Or is it a multi cocktail kind of thing? Yeah. Look at that. Now you can start fires. Well, I mean, he is a tough cocktail. How did he start the fire before? Now we're asking the real question. Spontaneous <laughs> combustion. The only reason. The only. The only way. How? He's a level four magic user. What can I tell you? <laughs> the red. The red mage, or, or is that? Is there a certain kind of? Well, that was a more of a D and D reference. Okay. Red uh, mages can use either or in the Final Fantasy world. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they're like the best of both worlds. They're combat and healing magic with the status buff magic as well. But they can hold medium to light armor hmm. and certain one-handed swords, some shields. Two hands, no. That's actually in the Final Fantasy world, which is really close to like how a battle mage would operate in D&D as well. Interesting. A long time ago, I found a character sheet based off Final Fantasy 1 on a tabletop version. And to this day, I'm looking for it still. And I cannot find it. So I'm thinking it was something some asshole made up and faked it. I'm sure it happens a lot, sadly. But all you gotta do is just find one of those um, walkthroughs people type out, like on mm -hmm. Game Facts, you know? And you can just look the stats at each level, how it gains up, and then just make it your own D&D &D table, yep. which is simple. Again, as I said in the past few, uh, video or so, tabletop games are so fun. They really are. If you've never played one, go out, find, you know, a few friends. You know, Dive go, in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The more it's dice, so the better. Exactly. I have the complete collection of Star Wars Saga rules. Huh. That same uh, game that Cousin Nate was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have the whole set up there. That's I fantastic. I haven't played in a long time. Hoping to change that soon. Hoping. You need to. Don't tell my business, devil woman. <laughs> You're talking about Rebecca? Because really, she is devil woman. <laughs> slash pack mule. She didn't even fire, look at that. I sh now yeah. yeah! That was an achievement? Come on! Come on! Sad face. <laughs> there should be... Aha! Light up. Is that a card? That is a candle. That is a... CS. That is a micro -film. That goes in... If I'm not mistaken, that probably goes in that big room full of, like, that classroom-looking room. With the projectors and shit? Yeah. See, this is this is a classic Resident Evil puzzle. It's not really a huge puzzle, but it's interesting. Because you see this. Okay. I go holding a candle in his hand. You see the sconce on the wall and everything. Light will guide you to a greater truth. So use your Zippo and light Exactly. That. It's just... They don't have very many puzzles like this. In it's the, not very obvious. Yeah. You know, in the in the Resident Evil games today, there's just hardly any puzzles anymore. Well, I've noticed a lot of newer games are more based on action than yeah. mystery puzzle. 
And that's why I absolutely loved Resident Evil 7. Because it brought Resident Evil back to its roots. Indeed. It really did. And it made ever, it made a lot of people happy. Only problem people had with it. First person. <laughs> it was a first person game. Oh, people well, could, you know, people can just get over first person view. It's a fun style. Exactly. Yeah, I wasted a lot of shotgun shells. Kind of did, but that was pretty badass. And look at that, there's more launcher shells up there, too. Hey, yeah, I need those. But for now, I think we need to call it a night, sir. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. And make sure to like shotgun. and subscribe. Have fun. <laughs> look at him dance. Look at him dance.